What are you gonna put in the offertory the next time you're at Mass? Welcome to 33 Days to Eucharistic Glory. It's week three, day 17, and today is about sacrifice. And so I do, I wanna ask a question like, what did you put in the offertory the last time you went to Mass? And what are you gonna put in the offertory the next time you go to Mass? Some of you will be like, Father, I use automatic deposit, seriously, Father. Okay, not talking about money at all. However, if we understand what Jesus gives us in the Eucharist, then we should want to give back. And so we should financially give, like just a given, that, but that's not what I'm asking. When I ask the question, what are you gonna put into the offertory? I'm not talking about finances. The finances are actually a symbol of what's supposed to be happening spiritually within our minds and our hearts. Now, if we understand what the mass is, the mass is the representation of Calvary. This is what we're getting to in today's chapter. We're, we're trying to comprehend that the Mass is the representation of Calvary. What happens at every single Mass is the death and resurrection of Jesus. At the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said, this is my body given up for you. Separately after the meal, he says, this is my blood poured out for you. When you separate body from blood, you have death. That's why he did it on the night that he was betrayed, because Jesus is giving his body and blood to us separately because it's it's... It's the way for us to enter into 2,000 years later into his death. I always have to think about the fact that like, God loves you, he loves me, he loves John the beloved disciple, he loved Mary Magdalene. And because he's a good father, he gave Mary Magdalene and the Blessed Mother and John the beloved disciple the honor of being present and the other Marys, of being present at his death. And he wants us to be present there as well, to have our ability to be present at Calvary. Now. If you had the opportunity right now to go Calvary, what would you offer? What would you give to Jesus in petitionary prayer? What would you give to Jesus in intercessory prayer on Calvary? Would you give him your broken marriage? Would you give him your son or your daughter who's sick with cancer? Would you give him your financial problems? Would you pour out to Jesus about your isolation, your loneliness, your depression? Or the loneliness or depression and isolation of your wife? Would you give them to the Lord your addiction to alcohol or to pornography or to materialism? You see, at Mass, my brothers and sisters, we have the opportunity to put into the offertory, not just money, but we're supposed to place into the offertory, into the offering of the bread and wine, we're supposed to place our lives. We're supposed to put our life onto the paten, into the chalice. The paten, by the way, is the gold uh, disc that the host is on. We're supposed to put our lives onto the paten. We're supposed to put our lives into the chalice so that when they are offered, this is my body given up for you, this is my blood poured out for you, they are offered in union with Christ's perfect sacrifice. And then, as the priest, during the Lamb of God, breaks the host, and we recognize him in the breaking of the bread, and he takes a fragment and he puts it into the chalice, our lives are crucified, our lives are risen in and with Jesus. There is no meaning to life without the cross. The cross is what gives meaning, but the cross also changes our life. It redeems our life. God wants us to put our lives into the sacrifice. He wants us to lay down our lives on the cross with him. And that's why this consecration to Jesus in the Eucharist, I believe, is so beautiful and so important because we need to understand where to take our sufferings. Where do you take your sufferings if you, don't, if you can't take them to the cross? Well, look what our world is doing. Our world is numbing itself with alcohol, with drugs, with food with distractions. That's not what Jesus wants. Jesus wants us to take our sufferings and our crosses and our worries and our struggles and our sufferings. He wants us to take them and just to lay them at the cross and to bring them to him 
so that through his death and through his resurrection, they are united to him, and we know of redemption, and we know of hope, and we know of peace. We are blessed. We are blessed to have a God who loves us that much. He didn't just love us 2,000 years ago. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And thus, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And until you come again, dear Jesus, we bring you our sacrifices, our sufferings, our struggles. We bring them to you at the foot of the altar. And we put into the offertory ourselves. We beg you to transform them. 33 days to Eucharistic glory. Is it transforming you? It's transforming me. Let's continue to walk together on this pilgrimage to be the saints of his kingdom. Amen. I don't know if you've noticed, but the world is a mess. America is divided. The church is in crisis. 50 million Catholics have stopped practicing their faith in the past 30 years. It's time to stop seeking worldly solutions to spiritual problems. There is something we can do right now. There is something you can do right now that can make a huge difference. Sign a petition to consecrate America to Jesus in the Eucharist. Click the button below and sign this historic document today. And remember, be bold, be Catholic.